Now, is this thing racing or what is it? Well, it's fast as shit, I'll say that. Wow. Holy Jesus. Took me a second to get used to this. Whoa, it's fast enough. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta take a second. <laughs> Apparently people just want to send me weird three and a half inch quadcopters to try out. This is The Quack from rubberquads.com. And honestly, it's not even a review. Let's just call it a showcase. I'm Joshua Bardwell. You're going to learn something today. When I review quadcopter frames, one of the things I ask is that it do at least one new innovative thing different than the stuff that came before it. And a lot of quadcopter frames kind of fail that test. They're just kind of a cosmetic rehash of stuff that's been done before. And there's nothing wrong with that. Like, not everything has to be new and innovative, but when a frame comes along that actually does something different, it really catches my eye. And this frame, I mean, this is crazy. The first thing you're going to notice that's different about this frame is the arms. So the arms are not flat carbon fiber plate. Instead, they are carbon fiber tubes. And carbon fiber tubes have a lot of advantages over carbon fiber plate. Their stiffness and strength to weight is significantly better than carbon fiber plate. They have great resonance characteristics, but the reason you don't see them more commonly used is their, their strength to weight is better but they're a lot lighter, and uh, as a result, they often are not as durable as a solid carbon fiber arm. Uh, I wonder if to some degree that's going to be mitigated here because this whole thing is sort of so small and light, mm, uh, maybe these aren't going to take as much impact and are going to be a little more durable than you might expect. Another advantage of the carbon fiber tubes is that the motor wires, and you can see here, they actually come down through this 3D printed piece and they actually go through the tube. So there's no ex uh, exposed motor wires to get chopped or snagged. And that's kind of cool, but if you look at the build instructions for this frame, you'll see it's also a giant pain in the ass to put together. Like, this is not a beginner build. You've really got to want what this frame has to offer in order to go through the hassle of actually putting it together. And then, God forbid, it breaks or something and you have to replace a motor, that's not going to be a quick swap. The arms go into the body of the frame in these 3D printed pieces. And some of the argument uh, that the frame designer makes is that these 3D printed pieces help isolate the arms. You can see there's no actual direct carbon to carbon contact between the bottom plate that the flight controller is mounted on and the arms and the motors themselves. So in some sense, the motors are completely isolated. Obviously, you'd have to check the gyro to see how that was playing out in real life, but that was one of the arguments that the frame designer made for designing his frame this way. Another thing that's unique about this frame is the way that the Vista is mounted. So it is mounted sideways. That means it can get plenty of airflow, but Vistas don't overheat in most frames, so that's not really that big of a deal. The real reason that the Vista is mounted this way is that it then lets this cutout for the battery put the battery closer to the CG. So we've got, we don't have sort of a top plate running along here with the battery mounted up above it. We've got the battery mounted very close to the CG, which should give better handling. It's just a really out of the box way of mounting the Vista. It's very clear that the frame designer didn't just look at every other three inch school bus style frame and go, yeah, I'll pretty much do that. They were very much thinking outside the box and uh, I'm for it. I'm happy to see that there's versatility for the camera mounting. Unfortunately, we only have one screw here. I do like to see cameras mounted with two screws because they hold their angle better, but then you usually don't get as much flexibility in the mounting. We have three slots here to mount the camera, and each of the slots let you slide the camera forward and back so you can place the camera so the lens is well protected by the side plates, at least as protected as it can be. The side plates connect to the bottom plate via this 3D printed piece. Uh, you can see that it screws into the bottom plate, 
with uh, just Phillips head screws and presumably they just go up into some very, very small screw holes in the TPU. We've got a similar piece in the back as well. Uh, it's always a struggle when you've got a frame with vertical side plates to figure out how to make that 90 degree joint with the base, uh, with, the, with the horizontal plates. And uh, 3D printed pieces like this is I think one of the best ways to do it. Anytime you've got carbon to carbon joints, you end up with a lot of complexity with the screws and tab A and slot B. And uh, this TPU approach also adds just a little bit of vibration isolation, hopefully. Uh, so I think this is a pretty good approach. There is not a lot of room in there for the flight controller, is there? That's it, that's all you get. So you're gonna be using an all-in-one flight controller with a combination ESC and flight controller in one. You are not gonna be putting any flight controller and ESC stack in here. And Lord, if you needed to work on it, would you need to take out one, two, three, four, five, six screws, and then would you just kind of lift off the two side plates, and then you'd still have this plate in here, although it does look like you would get some access to the electronics. This is not an easy to live with frame. Anytime you have to work on, anytime I have to work on this, I'd be cussing. And uh, while I was building it, I would also be cussing. But obviously somebody out there loves this frame enough to go through all the hassle of putting it together. And presumably the reason they love it is that they're a giant masochist. No, presumably the reason they love it is that it flies amazing. So let's take it outside and fly it. This thing's set up to fly with a naked GoPro, but I'm gonna try and fly the shit out of it. So I'm not gonna put a naked GoPro on here and break it. So there's gonna be like 20 grams less weight. You decide if that matters. Let's get it in the air. Well, I think this thing is intended for racing, but I, uh, <laughs> I could freestyle the shit out of this. Uh, the, uh, in case you're wondering, this thing fell over in a giant windstorm. I think my prop is a little messed up. I, I broke one of the props. It's a little off balance, but I, I want to fly this again. So uh, deal with it. Man. I mean, the fact that I can kind of fly this as smooth as I can with this broken prop seems to justify the arguments about vibration isolation. I'm really impressed. Oh, hello. There I am. I'm really impressed that I'm not seeing more vibration in the... I'm getting a little shakes as I fly. I mean, it's not... And you can kind of hear the motors sounding a little rough, but overall... It's flying shockingly well. I just cannot power loop this thing. The up tilt is just not where I expect it to be. We Low battery, you don't say. <laughs> this thing is freaking bonkers. What the Dickens? That's a... That shouldn't happen. Oh no, we got a problem. We got a problem. We got a problem. Oh yeah, no, I see the problem. I see the problem already. Aha! Interesting. Oh, we gotta go inside and check this out. First of all, here is the prop that it was flying on uh, when I said I had a broken prop. 
And that's not like the worst prop in the world. A lot of quadcopters would fly on that prop, but I was impressed with the amount of vibration that there wasn't in the video. It, it seems to be living up to its promise of having some stiffness and vibration isolation. That's fine. But here's the reason why people don't build with tubular frames that I didn't mention previously. Why was my quadcopter pulling to the side when I would throttle up? That's why. And it's not that the motor's broken. It is that this tube has twisted. It is that the tube is friction fit and is twisted out. Now, I just exaggerated that. That's the big weakness of, of, of tubes, okay, of circular tubes. Um, when circular tubes are done right, they have like notches or they're keyed in some way to prevent them from twisting. When they are purely friction fit, it is totally up to you to make sure that all the damn motors are sort of perpendicular. And then in a crash or a whack, they can come out of whack. Yeah, look, oh yeah, see? Look at this one, that's not square either anymore. And that, that's why nobody does this. And I was hoping, I was hoping when I saw this, that like this would be the one that told, converted me. And like, with, oh, yeah. It's just, it's just friction fit in here. They're literally just friction fit. So does that mean that every time I fly it, I've got to just kind of like huh, squeeze it in? Oh, so what would be the fix for this? Well, like one way that it could be done is to drill a hole through the tube and pass a screw through the tube. And then that would force the tube to be the correct length and, the, and to not twist. But that significantly weakens the tube, especially a tube as small as this. There isn't really a perfect solution for this. And that frankly is why most frame designers end up with flat carbon fiber plates. This is an incredibly cool, innovative, different frame. It is also a giant pain in the ass to build and maintain. And I don't know like what you would do to save this other than just to like check it after every flight and squeeze it in. I don't think this friction fit is a good idea. And that to me is the biggest weakness of it. But I am super happy to be able to share it with you. And if you want to check it out, I have a link to the frame designer. It just seems like a passion project for him more so than like a business. Uh, I've got a link to his website down in the video description. As well, I would like to show you this is the other weird, wacky three inch build that someone sent me. Uh, the title of the video I made about this is that this is changing FPV action sports forever. A little hyperbolic? I don't know. See for yourself. I'll put a card on screen and a link in the video description. See you there.